Okay, hello everybody. Let me introduce you uh, Green Titan, uh, early stage startup founded in Austria and Linz. We have four employees. Our partner is the Technical University of Vienna and our assets is actually a, a technology, a new technology for storing renewable electricity as natural gas using microorganisms. We received half a million euros of funding and a few words about the background of this technology. As you know, we're living in interesting times of actually a paradigm shift in electricity. I mean, until now, f fossil fuel fuels were the source for electricity, but now we have, in a way, wind and solar and geothermal hydro expanding very much. And uh, the issue with renewables is they are intermittent. The sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. This means we need a storage counterpart, and this is batteries partly, or, or compressed air, or hydrogen. In any case, renewables are growing, they need this counterpart, and the issue with uh, electrical storage mechanisms, or compressed air or hydrogen, is actually a smaller energy density and lower amount of energy you can store as such. That's why we are offering natural gas with a uh, substantially higher energy density, and this leads us also to the unique selling proposition, which is actually a core technology for long-term storage of renewable electricity as natural gas or actually as a hydrocarbon. And this is where we outperform in a way the competitors. Our business model is based on a full technology provider for renewable electricity uh, stored biologically as natural gas, covering the whole chain from power down to hydrogen and natural gas. Everything is founded on patents and strong R&D activities. Our products are reactors, integrated reactors, uh, biology spare parts and later on we are targeting licensing and royalty options especially when uh, in a way combining renewables with hydrogen and natural gas at the moment we are here at the demonstration uh, stage in Vienna okay the core technology is based on this conversion it's a CO2 in the presence of hydrogen and hydrogen in a way stores renewable electricity via electrolysis yielding methane and water slightly exothermic the whole reaction with an overall efficiency of 80%. The process is based on methanogenesis, that's actually the oldest metabolism on Earth. Earth is five billion years old, and life existed long time before cyanobacteria popped up. Uh, the atmosphere was, in a way, oxygen-free, and life existed doing this transformation or uh, mechanism. So uh, microorganisms of archaea or extremophile category are highly selective and suited, in a way, to convert CO2 to methane. Our process assets are uh, selective conversion, mild conditions, low temperature, low pressure, and very fast conversion. And that's where biology outperforms old biology and also chemistry in a way. Because if you look at biofuels of the first, second, and third generation, they all have in common photosynthesis, which is followed by a fermentation step. And this is actually quite low or quite small, the conversion. That's the reason why all these biofuels have difficulties uh, in a way with the overall process economy. In this case, we are going from gases down to methane with a much higher, in a way, process conversion speed. And this qualifies the process for fourth generation biofuels. So we don't have photosynthesis. We don't compose biomass. We are turning gases to a gas byproduct uh, without touching, in a way, the biomass. Okay, there is some competition on the market. Some competitors are turning electricity to methane, like solar fuel. Some are co turning electricity into liquid hydrocarbons, like Sunfire. There's others in the field of biofuels of the first, second, third generation. Some are using algae. There is no direct competitor in turning, in a way, uh, hydrogen made from renewable electricity to, in a way, hydrocarbon using biology. This is new and there is actually uh, indirect competition as mentioned in the field of chemical electricity storage. Okay, the team is comprised of me and Michael Benish. We are both quite experienced from petrochemical industry. Michael has now also joined uh, Nestle as, as head of engineering in, in the food industry sector. We have 18 years of experience altogether building assets. We have invested or generated value in the range of 130 million Euros, our assets are also innovation drive and education, which is actually also reflected in the patents, as mentioned. The business case is straightforward. At the moment, we are building our case on demonstration plans, but later on, it will be also, in a way, the product methane, because we are moving to a different economy. As mentioned, we are talking about the price parity between electricity and hydrocarbons in 10 years from now, 
electricity should be or become comparably cheaper compared to hydrocarbons. And that's where we expect at the end also revenues from the product natural gas. Uh, break even is expected in two and a half years from now. Investment opportunity at the moment, everything is privately owned. We need around 3 million euros to move to the next stage in order to uh, set up those demonstration plants and set up the company on a broader basis. We're looking for a strategic investor for, with technical know-how, very important, so more from the corporate world. And uh, that is it. In case you have more questions, uh, please go ahead, ask me right now after that or write me an email. Thanks. Any questions on the floor? Could you please wait for the microphone? Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah. What concentrations of CO2 do you need and where do you take it from? Because okay, atmospheric that's a good CO2. question because everything breaks down to the CO2 source. As mentioned before, biology is selective and we can use any CO2 source. We can use, uh, in fact, we prefer enriched sources and we have uh, experimented already with biogas having 50% CO2 and we are perfectly capable to convert the mixture of CO2, methane, H2S and other bi-components into methane by substituting the CO2 part with methane using this technology. So 50% is okay. Uh, now we are experimenting more with real gases from industry and other sources. But of course we prefer an enriched source because in a way byproducts in and, and byproducts out. The higher the concentration of CO2, the better. But as I mentioned before, the selectivity of microorganisms to in a way extract CO2 from any source except of in the presence of oxygen is one of the biggest assets here. Chemistry always needs a lot of purification, It's what I can tell you as a chemist. But biology, like if you take a microorganism from a black smoker, a deep sea vent and, and, and such, they're actually capable to take anything out of this mixture. And that's where you save a lot of purification. Purification is one of the big drivers of uh, the whole overall process economy or cost. And could you use flue gases? As well? Yes, we can. We can, of course, and we are thinking of moderating or changing the process in such a way that CO2 in flue gas is enriched, something similar to the oxyfuel process, where you separate, in a way, oxygen from air, or you are, in a way, uh, burning in the presence of pure oxygen, and that way you are, in a way, enriching your CO2 stream. But yes, we can, sure. I mean, nitrogen doesn't, uh, decon uh, doesn't uh, affect the microorganism, it's just oxygen. More than 3% you should not have. In that case, it dies. It acts as a poison, just like CO acts for us. On the other side. Thank you. Okay. My name is Carl Berninghausen. I'm re representing uh, your horrible competitor, Sunfire. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, and uh, my question is uh, the efficiency rate of over 80% that you presented, how is that calculated? Where, what energy comes in, what energy comes out? Yeah, actually, I can go back to this just briefly to... It's a good question, and that's also one of the reasons, for some reason, this doesn't work. Anyhow, uh, we are converting hydrogen to methane. Hydrogen has three kilowatt hours per cubic meter. We need four mole equivalents or volume equivalents yielding 12 per cubic meter. For methane, it's 10. 10 over 12 is 0 0.83. We are losing something because of stirring speed, so you need to move something in order to distribute gases into a liquid. But we save on pressure and temperature. If you have compressors and a lot of temperature, you're losing in the overall process economy. If you have a chemical process with two, 300 degrees, that's a typical heterogeneously catalyzed process and, and the bigger pressures, temperatures, this simply uh, makes your overall process economy quite bad. So having this biology, which is out of thermogenic, more or less, where, where you keep the, the temperature because it's releasing, uh, in a way, also heat. Uh, so you don't need to heat. Also, the pressure is one or two bars. Uh, those drivers, you don't, we don't have. That's the reason why I decided to go for biology instead of chemistry. I know, I know the Sabatier process. This is widely explored. But it suffers, in a way, from uh, rare earth metals that are quite expensive for more pressure, 200 degrees and, and such. That's why biology is actually more um, suitable if you go this route. Now, in your case, you're going to liquid fuels. It's a bit more difficult because, because I don't know of any 
biologic process which can turn CO2 directly to ethanol without using biomass, but anyhow. Well, here we have uh, Dr. Alexander Krahete. He has a PhD in chemistry and 13 patents. Correct. That's amazing. Uh, you are pitching and uh, can you tell me a little bit about your role and, and the company? Okay, I'm founder of a startup company called Green Titan, which deals with uh, a technology that is useful for storing renewable electricity as natural gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you start up? I started yeah. developing this whole concept actually in 2007 during my stay in Norway. Oh, okay. That's when I came across an interesting article from uh, Lanza Tech describing basically a technology which uh, used in a way CO and CO2 from uh, steel industry in conjunction with uh, microorganisms to make in a way a fuel out of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in a way the moment which inspired me to develop a large scale technology for the conversion of in a way climate killer CO2 into something useful. Yeah. And this, was, this was basically a step ahead of carbon capture storage, which you have probably heard about. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what Norway is famous about. A technology to in a way separate CO2 from a, in a way emission gas stream uh, liquefy and deposit under earth, which basically just uh, in a way uh, changes the state of CO2, but it doesn't bring it back into the carbon cycle. So yeah. the idea was to in a way come up with something new, which would in a way use CO2 as a raw material. A lot of innovation and I know right. that there are other companies here at the summit uh, also using CO2 right. to create energy. Exactly. Yes. So that would be a good match. That's for you. a good match, but there is a substantial difference. I can mention that because you will ask me probably about the uniqueness of the yeah. whole thing, or that's what people are wondering in general. How do you position yourself? Mm. I mean, most of those processes, which in a way use uh, CO two, are based on chemistry. Um, I'm a PhD chemist, but I'm not using chemistry. I'm using biology for one specific reason. Mm. Biology is milder in a way, so the conditions are better. The process economy is better because at the end of the day. Everything boils down to the economy, to mm -hmm. the process economy as such. Then selectivity plays a role. Can you only use CO2 which is 100% clean? Mm -hmm. Or can you utilize industrial CO2 sources or biological CO2 sources? All that is much better when you're using uh, biological means, like mm -hmm. microorganisms which are highly specialized to convert CO2 because their metabolism is based on that. And that's what we have. We have archaea microorganisms which basically dominated Earth's surface for 4 billion years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Earth is 5 billion years old and life exists for a long time, but without oxygen. So 50% of that time was dominated by special microorganisms we haven't been aware of until mm -hmm. the late 70s when they were discovered as an own life domain. So mm -hmm. They are called archaea. Now they're living uh, in a way subsea, under Earth, in volcanoes, in all those special places which are deprived of oxygen. And those microorganisms we have taken in a way uh, and we have developed a process to convert CO2 into natural gas. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's a quite, pretty amazing. Uh, Far-fetched yeah. approach, put it that yeah. way. Are there, are there competitors out there? There are competitors uh, who are following the concept of uh, storing electricity as natural gas, but as I mentioned, using a chemical mm -hmm. conversion process yeah. from CO2 to methane. It's the Sabatier process, more or less. Mm -hmm. There's other companies who are converting CO2 to a liquid fuel, like Sunfire, for instance. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of them who are converting biomass into whatever. Mm -hmm. Biogas or, let's say, bioethanol or biodiesel. There is uh, biofuels of different generations. Yeah. But they all together don't use uh, a monoculture, one specific microorganism of that type. Not at all. Because this is also an anaerobic process, which in a way functions in the absence of oxygen. Okay, so yeah. are you at the seed stage now? How much yes, capital do you need? Yes, that's where I am. Uh, yes, uh, I raised uh, around uh, half a million so far in mm -hmm. the last two years. But this is way not enough. Much more is needed to establish a company to, in a way, build demonstration plans. So I, I, indeed, I am now in the seed phase. I'm looking mm -hmm. for venture capital for the right strategic partner. Actually, I'm not so sure that venture capitalists would be the right people here. Uh, it might be better to have a bigger company on board because this is not something which is developed in one, two or three years. It's something which requires a much longer development until uh, you have placed the product on the market because you're interfering here in two uh, things. 
in one way we have a new technology at the same time we are talking about the new market also. Mm -hmm. And to combine a new technology with a new market is uh, in a way a big challenge and you need to have someone with a really long breath in mm -hmm. that respect. So how can we speed up the transformation of a smart green economy? Yeah, that's a good question. I was thinking about that. Uh, this thing has always three aspects. One is technology. Mm -hmm. The other two aspects are related to business and politics or policy. A lot has been discussed about uh, CO2 global policies and establishing the right uh, legal environment to make new technologies profitable and uh, useful. And uh, I think technologies as such are around. They've been around for a long time. Actually, but are we implementing and moving too slow? We are moving at a moderate pace. Germany probably better than other countries. That's also something which I've analyzed, putting different countries into perspective to each other. So in Germany, you have a unique situation because of this EEG, Erneuerbare Synergiegesetz, which in a way helps new technologies come with their products to the market. Mm -hmm. you know, because if you are producing solar, electricity, wind or biogas whatsoever, you're never competitive with your uh, large uh, commodity product like methane or electricity with other fossil fuel based mm -hmm. uh, production uh, technologies. So you need to have someone who is compensating this delta to make in a way the production or the technology feasible or competitive. And that's what Germany has recognized far away other countries. And it's important to have technology, politics and business working together. Yeah. Otherwise, you can never get the technology in the market. There's a lot of stuff uh, published and uh, things which have been tried in, in the last decades, but they never made it to the market simply because of uh, economy as the last final and probably most difficult obstacle or hurdle. Mm -hmm. You have a think tank. Well, that's actually what we are planning to do. The oh, name okay. Green Titan is derived from Green Energy Think Tank. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are thinking um, in, in the far future to establish a think tank, but now it's the whole thing is based on, on the technology I mentioned and on efforts to get the technology on the market. Yeah, and your vision with this, do you bring together certain uh, uh, companies or what My kind of... My vision is actually uh, straightforward. When I developed this technology a few years ago, it was based on the idea to provide a large scale technology that would in a way utilize CO2 in big scale. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is complaining there is billions of tons of emitted CO2 but there is no anthropogenic or human-made technology which is using CO2 in large scale. So the mission or vision in the beginning was to come up with something that would use CO2 as a raw material, but not to make polycarbonates, something with a small market, but to make something uh, with a big market. Mm -hmm. and eventually it means to turn CO2 back into its origin, into an energy carrier. Now, uh, this was the first step and I, in a way, promoted this as a CO2 recycling technology. But then in the course of time, it popped up that um, placing this as a technology to store renewable electricity would be much more interesting because CO2 is not that appealing. Everyone complains about this, but it doesn't have a value. And the mm -hmm. carbon credits everyone is talking about don't really exist. And if they exist, it's a very small value. If you go buy electricity, it's much better for one simple reason. We are witnessing times of big changes. Until now we have uh, had and we still have this fossil fuel based economy. So we get our fuels for transportation from fossil fuels like uh, diesel, like gas, uh, whatsoever. But uh, we are now changing to an electricity based company. So all those efforts in the field of renewable energies are based on building up uh, wind, uh, solar capacity, geothermal capacity, hydrothermal, depending on the geographic uh, situations. And now there is one substantial problem and this links or it's coming mm -hmm. back to the vision now. Renewables are intermittent. That means the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. So when you need it, you don't have it. So you need to have a fuel, you mm -hmm. need to store it. Now there is different ways to store it and everyone is talking about batteries and this is true. Batteries are useful to a certain extent you can store a smaller amount, the same with uh, pumped hydro and with uh, compressed air. But at the end of the day, you need to have something with higher energy density and this brings you to fuel. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to turn uh, in a way the growing uh, electricity uh, amount into a fuel like uh, natural gas or ethanol or whatsoever, which is transportable with a higher dens density, 
then you would have the right pair for renewables. So renewables are growing and they are forecasted with a two-digit growth all over the mm -hmm. world and they need a storage uh, counterpart. And that's where we see the vision to provide a large-scale technology to store renewables as natural gas. Yeah. Do you think we can become 100% renewable? Uh, it all depends on the geographic conditions. I mean, not mm -hmm. every country has access to a lot of wind or solar or uh, geothermal or hydro, which is basically the prerequisite or the main requirement mm -hmm. to become renewables. But some countries do, like Iceland, and they are partly, and Germany has huge capacities of wind, which it can still exploit. I don't think 100% that fast. But and I can, wave energy? There hasn't been too much talk about uh, wave. Wave energy is something in development. I guess I'm not the most competent yeah. to judge <laughs> wave and tidal energy. But uh, sure, if you are focusing more on uh, exploiting all those technologies, I think um, altogether we might uh, come up in a couple of decades and cover all our energy need from renewables exclusively. Yeah. So what are you uh, most looking forward to uh, today at the I'm speeches? looking forward to meeting interesting people. I, I see there's a lot of representatives of, from actually competing companies. <laughs> it would be interesting to see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, except for that, um, right, I look forward to presenting what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's Maybe it. Maybe we can uh, change from competition to collaboration. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's It'll always, be great. Uh, I mean, uh, borderline yeah. between competing and collaborating. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's been great.